Nanotechnology is a new manufacturing technology that will allow us to build structures atom by atom with each atom placed exactly where we want it. So if you're building up from atomic molecular building blocks, uh, the question is sort of roughly, you know, what can you make from atoms? And that's a very broad class of things. The structures that we build in nanotechnology are measured in terms of nanometers. Five or six carbon atoms side by side equals one nanometer. And you will be building parts at that scale. There's a very conservative design for building computers comparable in power to modern CPUs but occupy approximately one cubic micron. Putting the power of a modern day CPU into a cubic micron lets you deliver that kind of computational power in a volume that's about one one thousandth that of, of one of the cells in your body. That says something about the kinds of tools that will be available for uh, biomedical instrumentation and intervention in the future. Increasingly, we're seeing software being translated into material objects. We can go a lot further in that direction. The idea is that we'll have machines on our desks that can extrude material of any type. You can think of it sort of like the Star Trek replicator. You ask for what you want, you provide raw materials and energy, and out comes the object, perhaps with embedded computation. So how would I send a device to you? You would send an object just as information through the internet, a file containing data. So I could email a toaster to you. Perhaps even better, you could email toast. When we get to the 2030s and 2040s, the, the non-biological portion of our intelligence, the machine portion, is going to be millions of times, ultimately billions of times more powerful than the biological portion. Biology is very intricate and very impressive, but really suboptimal compared to what nanotechnology will ultimately build. Nanotechnology can build with uh, all the atoms in the periodic table. Biology can only build with a limited number of them. Another application could be scanning the brain, pick up enough salient details to basically capture the mind file. Nanorobots could be used to record substantially all the traffic to get a complete picture of the state of your brain at any given moment. In principle, you could put a nanorobot at almost every synapse in your brain. Once you do that, the nanorobots could be able to uh, read out the signals that were being transmitted. So in that sense, you could take complete control of the human uh, mental apparatus, the visual apparatus, the hearing apparatus. So we could back up our brains. In principle, that's possible, yes. And that could extend our intelligence, maybe extend our memory, but it could also provide virtual reality from within, within the nervous system, shut down the signal coming from your real, real senses and replace them with the signals that you would be receiving if you were in the virtual environment. We could think of it as places that don't exist in physical space, but that people can inhabit and meet and do things that humans do, build things, exchange things. And the wonderful thing is, you know, reality's just gotten a lot bigger. As virtual reality becomes more and more realistic, we'll be spending more and more of our time in, in these environments. And some of the people that we interact with will be projections of real biological people, and some of them will be artificial people that are just existing in this virtual reality. It's going to be wonderful in many ways, some of which are unimaginable. It will bring lots of new problems we can barely anticipate at this point. But what reality is, it's just going to be huge and much more limited by imagination as opposed to material constraint. Nanotechnology eventually will be self-replicating. It'll be feasible to create an entity that could actually go into a natural environment, gather materials to create a copy of itself, and self-replicate, just the way biological cells do that. What it is is you have a, a large number of nanorobots slowly and quietly replicate themselves, uh, not enough to generate much of a heat signature. And then when there's enough of them, they suddenly turn to an attack phase. And uh, in approximately 90 replications, they could devour the entire ecosphere. This is sometimes called the gray goo scenario. 